Hey there, it's Lori with LM's Crafty Creations. Welcome back to my channel. I have a new design team project for you for CountryCraftCreations.com and I use the Authentic Romance Collection. If you're on Facebook on the Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations Facebook page, uh, you saw a sneak peek that I showed of this on that page. And the album is smaller than what I normally do. It's five and three quarters by seven and a quarter. And after I take you through and walk you through all the matting and everything I did in the album, I'll go directly into the tutorial as always. Um, what I've done on the front cover here is I liked the look of the craft and black card stock together with this collection. And so that's what I've done here. I've layered it. I did have a closure on it, but I used seam binding and I'm, I just didn't like the way it looked, so I took it off. Um, here I've used the my favorite doodlebug velvet type paper, and I just wrapped the spine with it. And on the back, I used this very cute brick pattern from the paper collection. I used um, every sheet in the collection as well as the punch outs. It didn't come with stickers, it came with punch outs. And so I used most of those, and then of course the cut parts. So on the inside here, it is how many? Three pages? I was going to do four, but I decided I wanted to do a small album this time. Um, and so I've done stacked pockets on the front cover. And these are just some extra pieces of those punch outs that I didn't use. I just stuck them in the pocket here. And then there is um, a four by four photo mat right there. And in here, I got four by six photo mats. And I only put the cardstock, the um, brown cardstock on one side, as you can see. <clears throat> so even though the album is small, it does hold full four by six photos. So what I've done here is I actually messed up on this page. And in the tutorial, I, I'll show you how to do it correctly. I was drawing a three quarter inch frame around here, but for some reason I'm, I know what I did. You know, you're supposed to account for the hinges on the sides of the pockets. And here I, there's no hinge, so I didn't account for that. And I did that on every single page. So this part is bigger than all these other parts, which I think it still looks okay, but um, it's not correct. So it drives me nuts. So this is just like a photo frame. And you can, I'd use a cut apart on this side, so you could put that in here if you like. Um, but my idea was just to put um, a photo on the photo mat. It's a four and a quarter by six and a quarter photo mat. And stick it in here so your photo will show through the window. And this flips. And our first flip, I just did a punch out from the collection, a couple of strips of paper, and then your photo here. And then right here, I did an angled pocket, but I did it kind of floating. So it's right there in the middle of the page. And I like the way that turned out. I did a couple of different, like um, a photo strip kind of photo mat there. And these just fit in. And this will hold a lot of stuff if you choose to really bulk it up. And here I took those punch outs and backed them to cardstock. And when I did that, I actually forgot that I, I cut the paper here on purpose to stick something down in there. And then I stuck here something here and then forgot about that little pocket that I had made. So um, I'm not using it right now. I did a four by four here. And then this is the base page of the album and you can fit a full size uh, photo mat there. I think these are four and a half by six and a half. And then this flips. We're still on the first page of the album, and I just did two four by four photos. Of course, you can arrange it all you any way you want, or if you don't want to just put um, the design paper here, then you can do that. And then I did I backed this um, cut apart on cardstock and glued it down. And then there's just a simple pocket on the back, this little bird sticker, and then I did um, I left these blank on the back for either a photo or um, you could take a white pen and do journaling, or you could put the craft card stuck on here and journal on top of that. So I loved that cut apart. This um, pocket will hold, maybe not that one, this one. You could put full-size photos in this pocket. 
and they'll fit just fine. So um, that's the reason I designed it that way. So you could get more full size photos without cropping them if you didn't want to. So again, I did the same thing here. I have just the photo mat and then it flips and I did a little di bit different designs all the way throughout. This is that little sneak peek you saw. This is a cut apart and I just backed it on cardstock and then this was as well and I loved this one. I thought it looked good with that brick background. Two three by fours here and then in the pocket I have two photo mats and then a cut apart on the back of that one. Here, I love this rose paper, it's gorgeous. And then I did these, I love these stamps. I did this in the corner with some strips of paper. Again, another photo mat there, it's just plain. I did put paper on the, the other side though, because I had enough. Um, the good thing about doing the place photo here mats is that you only have to use strips of your design paper, so it allows extra paper to be able to do things like this. Um, he, this was a cut apart and I just kind of partially backed it because I wanted to keep this look right here. Um, this is the same and then I just did a little 3 by 4 photo mat there. Turn the page and then again this pocket and isn't that gorgeous? Super cute. Blank on the back. Here I did a little punch out. This is again that same photo mat. I won't pull it out again. And then another photo mat here with a punch out the angled pocket and again two photo mats in this one and then a 4 by 4 photo here another stamp that says our happy ending this photo mat here and then I loved this paper here the pink kind of wood grain kind of look with the um, can you see the flower detail on that? It's just, it's really pretty. So I, I don't think I would even stick a photo here. That's why I left it totally plain. I just like to look at the paper. I put a little rose punch out here. This is a full four by six. And then flip the page and just another cut apart. So cute. And then on the back, I did the same thing on the front. Um, a stacked pocket, cut apart, and then two photo mats in here with nothing on the back. So it was a really cute, simple album, fun to put together. Um, I intended it to be a lot smaller than it was. This is actually one page right here and I just couldn't help myself. I just kept adding flaps. So um, it was supposed to be a lot simpler than this, but I think it turned out well. So let's go in and talk about how I made the pages. So let me get all my stuff together here. I already have everything cut out. Of course you know I'm going to use my favorite. This is my art glitter glue and I love it. This is a blank piece. So let me figure out what we want to start with. That's the stacked pockets. That's the pocket on the back. I want to start with this and am I missing one or not? I said I had everything together. Do I really? I don't know. This, Yes, I do. I really, really do. Okay, so we're going to start off with this piece and this is going to be you cut one piece to five and three eighths by six and three quarters, and you're gonna score on the five and three eighths of an inch side at half an inch, and then at five eighths of an inch. We want a little gusset here. So I'm gonna fold this on the first score mark, and then go in and add that little gusset, like so. Okay, so that's what it should look like. You should have a little gusset there. Okay. Then you're going to cut a piece to six and three quarters by nine and a half, and you're going to score on the nine and a half inch side at four and three quarters. And this one you're simply going to fold in half. Okay, so you're going to take these two pieces. This one opens this way. 
and you're going to glue, you're going to add your glue to the outside of the hinge here and you're going to stick this one directly on top. So I'm going to add my glue. and add it on top. Make sure you don't go over that first score line. You want to keep that gusset intact. Sometimes it's easier to do that by making it flat. So it should look like this. So when you open it you have this gusset here and I'll show you why in a bit. But first, we're going to add our acetate window pocket right here. So that is this piece, and you're going to want to cut it to five and a quarter by seven and three quarters. You're going to score on the five and a quarter inch sided half an inch, and then on the seven and three quarter inch sided half an inch on each end. And you're going to want to miter these corners. And what I mean by miter is to cut it off where the score lines meet. This just removes bulk from your albums by doing that. And go ahead and fold. Do you need to fold? You don't have to fold. Because what we're going to do is we're going to draw a, um, whatchamacallit, a uh, frame around it. Gosh, I just can't talk. But I'm just going to fold mine real quick and just make sure everything lines up. And it does. Always want to make sure I'm not wasting your time and doing things incorrectly. So I've already drawn my border here. So what you're going to want to do, where'd my pencil go? I've lost it. Oh well, I don't need it. I'm going to do a three quarter inch frame all the way around. So on this side, these three sides you have hinges. So you don't make the mistake that I did on my book. Um, three quarters. You have to account for that half inch hinge. So I took my Tim Holtz ruler and on the sides that have hinges I measured over what is that? An inch and a quarter on all sides and then drew a line. Three sides. Sorry. I'm trying not to confuse you. On three sides. Measure over an inch and a quarter and then draw your line. And then on the side that doesn't have a hinge, you're just going to measure over three quarters and draw a line. That'll give you a three quarter of an inch border all the way around. And then you're going to cut that out. So I'm going to do that quickly. You can use a ruler if you like. I usually do this by hand because I'm in a hurry, normally. <laughs> and after you do it for a while, you just get quicker at it, I think. Okay, so there's that cut out. So now I'm going to take my piece of acetate and I'm going to leave it with my lines face up. And then I'm going to remove this acetate is cut to four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I've added three eighths of an inch tape all the way around the perimeter of it. And I'm just going to remove the tape backing here. And I'm going to stick it down. Okay. And I'm going to take my bone folder and make sure that it is properly stuck down. I'm using the acetate that you can write on, which is very, it's different from the, the stuff that you can't write on. It's more plasticky or something, I don't know. Makes it a little different. It can crease easier. Okay, so take your, your pages that you created before. Go ahead and fold on your hinges now. 
and you should have that nice framed border that we're looking for. Then take your glue and add glue to the hinges. And stick it down. Make sure you line it all up. And I like to do that by picking it up and kind of quickly moving it around because the glue, if you're using the art glitter glue, this stuff sets quick. So you have to be fast. Okay. So there's our acetate pocket and our first flap. So now what we want to do is add the um, base page. So turn this whole piece over and you're going to use this piece. This piece is cut to nine and a half by seven and three quarters. You're going to score on the nine and a half inch side at four and three quarters and then on the seven and three quarter inch side at half an inch on each end. And then what you're going to do is I have kind of drawn some marks for you here. You're going to want to cut up from this. There's a score line right here that where that four and three quarter inch score line is. Cut this at an angle up to where those score lines meet and you're going to take off this piece right here and you're going to do the same at the top. So take this and just cut this hinge off. You don't need it. You only need a hinge on this piece to make your base page. So I'm going to flip it this way. I'm going to kind of go at an angle here and I'm going to cut this off. Make sure you do it carefully. To do less than you need, the more than you need is better because what you can do, this piece is going to fold in this way. Okay. So we have our hinges, this piece folds in, so really against where you would normally fold it. And then you're going to take your hinges at the top here and you're going to fold them down. Okay. So this is what it looks like. This is folded and then you have this. So if you have any of it hanging over, which I really don't here on, in this case, normally I do, you can just give it a quick trim. I have just a little bit hanging over here. So I'm just going to trim. Just make sure you don't cut this hinge at all. And we're going to attach this right here. So this is the back of this piece. You're going to put your glue here. Oops. Make sure it doesn't go over. I don't want to glue my page together. And this will be what I like to call your binding pocket. You're going to line this up and stick it down. Okay. So here is your base page. So you have the acetate window and right now you have a flap here that we're going to change into an angled pocket and then you have your another flap where you attach it to your hinge of your book and then another flap here and then back here we'll have a pocket. So let's go ahead and work on the angled pocket. So to do that, I keep saying so. Um, this piece is cut to five and an eighth by seven and a quarter. You're going to score on the five and an eighth of an inch side at half an inch, and then on the seven and a quarter inch side at half an inch. Go ahead and miter this corner, and then fold on the score lines this time. And you're going to have to measure on this one to create your angled pocket. And now I do need my pencil. Let me grab it. 
So, just like we've done, um, we've done this before in some of the other albums. If you followed along with me, you're going to take, you start your ruler at the top. This is where the hinge is on this side. See? And you're going to measure over two inches and make a little mark, tick mark at the top here. Do the same on the bottom. Okay? And now that you have a mark at the top and a mark at the bottom, you're going to take your ruler and join those two together. And then you're going to cut this off, following the line that you just drew. Okay? So there's your angled pocket. Super easy, right? So now you're going to take your base page again, you're going to flip it open. Hold on, okay, so your acetate pocket's here, and you're going to flip to this page. You should have a little gusset on this side right here. Then you're going to add your glue. And you're going to stick this down, lining it up on this side. So you will have a decent size gap right here to give your room, your pocket, plenty of room to expand. And it won't hinder the flap closing at all. There you go. Now to make it kind of like a floating pocket, you're just going to take this page, and I folded all the other ones back. I'm going to take my scissors, and all I did is I cut directly up following that same line of the angled pocket. So now it looks like it's floating. You know what I mean. It's a different um, size than the other pages. Okay. The only other thing I did here is I added a pocket on the very back. And that pocket is cut to three and three quarters by five and three quarters. Score on the five and three quarter inch side at half an inch on each end. And then on the three and three quarter inch side at half an inch. Miter those corners. Fold on your score lines. And you're going to add this pocket lining it all the way up to the edge of the page. It should fit just perfectly. Like so. And this is it. This is the page. I created three of these. You can create as many as you want. Just make sure that you allow for that in your spine. You'll, if you create any more than three, you'll have to make your, sp your spine bigger than two inches. Okay? So, let's talk about the binding system. I've created the measurements um, and provided those to you for the binding system. It's just like the hidden hinge binding system. I use one inch hinges. Okay? So that's the difference um, in the regular hidden hinge versus the modified version. You just use one inch hinges and then you only attach your page halfway onto the hinge, okay? So that's why you see this space right here. You can see it right, really good right there. So it's a one inch hinge and my page is only attached halfway down, okay? That's the only difference. So that's the measurements that I have provided you for and that will also account for the extra measurement you'll need um, extra link you'll need in the cover to account for the pages sticking out a little further. Does that make, I hope that makes sense. So that's what I've done. And the only other thing that I did cut for, but I don't really, I'm not going to glue it down, is the stacked pockets. I'll show you quickly. You're going to cut two pieces to three inches by six and five eighths. And to those pieces, you're going to miter your corner just like you normally do on the first one and on this but like this 
and that one will go right here. So stick that one down first and it acts like just a regular pocket. You fold on all the score lines and then you add your glue here and then stick the pocket down right there. Okay, that's the first one. On the second pocket, what I like to do is I kind of angle my cut right here at the corner and then I'm going to angle it right here at the corner and kind of pull that off. Do you see what the difference is here between the two? And instead of cutting all the way across, I'm just going to angle it here and then angle it here. So it gives it just slight difference. And then you're going to fold this one in and fold this one in, but not the bottom one. So when you attach your pocket, this one will be attached. Let me take this stuff out so I can do this quickly. This one will be attached and then you'll take this and you'll stick it inside. And it's not working since I have two sets of pockets right here. You'll stick it inside there. So on this top one, you only put your glue on the two sides. And then the bottom hinge is just a guide as to where you need to stop to put your second stacked pocket, okay? I hope that is um, a good explanation on how to do that. And I think that's it. All my photo mats were basic sizes. I used either four and a quarter by six and a quarter, four by four or three by four. I didn't use any odd size photo mats. Um, on these, I did three and a half by four and a half because I double matted them with the, the craft cardstock, which I liked that look. And that is it. There's my album, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them down below. As always, all the measurements that you need to create this album are in the description box down below. And um, please visit countrycraftcreations.com and um, purchase all your supplies from there. The collect I'll link the collection down below so you can find it easily. And um, it's just it's a beautiful collection. Authentic always just a wonderful job. They're one of my favorite paper companies, and and this is no exception. So I hope you love it. Thanks for watching.